Hello. What we're going to do now is a couple of examples. So we'll start with one very simple example of using the law of large numbers. So what is the example I want to do? I want to imagine an experiment in which we have n samples of xi. These are random variables, and we have n samples of them. We know that xi equals 1 if some load arrives. And it equals 0 otherwise. And we're going to model this as being a coin toss. This occurs with some probability p. With some probability p, uh, x will be 1, which means some load has arrived. With probability 1 minus p, nothing will arrive, and we won't have any load for that particular time period. Now, what I want to know is if we actually observe the x's, can we figure out what the p is? Suppose we didn't know the p to begin with. So let's just think about it first. If we have 1,000 samples and about 500 of them are ones and the other 500 are zeros, what do you think the p should be? Intuitively, it's pretty clear that the p that you should estimate in that case is 1 half. So let's just think about an estimator. So our estimator, so p is the thing we don't know. p hat is our estimator. We're going to say our, our estimator is just the average, the empirical average. So we take 1 over n, and we take the n samples, and we just add up the x's. So notice, this is a random variable. This estimator is a random variable because it depends on random variables xi. Now, what the weak law of large numbers does, what the law of large numbers we've uh, proved does, is it tells us something about the behavior of this p hat as n gets large. So how can we use this? So what we want to do, suppose, is to figure out with what probability have we got this estimate within plus or minus 0.1. So for within 0.1 of the true probability, we'll consider that good enough. So now the question is, what's the probability of being good enough? What can we say about this? Now, in this particular example, we can actually say quite a bit, but I'm going to restrict to using Chebyshev's inequality. So we say, well, we want the probability of being good enough. Well, this is not the form of Chebyshev's inequality. Chebyshev's inequality, for one thing, has a greater than equal to here. So we can say that this is certainly equal to 1 minus probability p hat minus p is greater than or equal to 0 0.1. Now we've got it in the form of Chebyshev's inequality. Now, Chebyshev's inequality says that the probability of this kind of deviation is getting small as n gets large. So it's an upper bound. So an upper bound on this turns into a lower bound on this whole thing. So by Chebyshev's inequality, 1 minus the variance divided by n times the square of the deviation. So what's the deviation? What goes here? Well, this goes there. So substituting in. The variance of these uh, xi's is just p times 1 minus p. So we have this expression. So given an expression like this, are we done? Well, what we want to know is something about the probability of being good enough. We don't know p. So we have ex ex expressed the probability that we're good enough as being at least this quantity but this quantity depends on this p, which we don't know. So we would like to have a statement that doesn't have that kind of dependence. So how do we do that? Well, if we don't know this p, let's just think about what this looks like. This as a plot, as a function of p, looks like this. Remember we did this in class.
at one half, this is p times one minus p, at one half is equal to a quarter and that's the maximum value it takes. So we know that this particular expression, whatever it is, is less than or equal to one quarter. Well, if this is less than or equal to one quarter, then we can continue to follow these inequalities. We can drop one quarter in here. So let's simplify this a bit. So 4 times 0 0.1 squared, well, the 0 0.1 squared is, is 100. Bring it over there. So this is 1 minus 25 over n. So now we know, given n, what's the probability that it's good enough for sure? Well, so let's try some examples. If n is equal to 100, so if we take 100 samples, we know that the probability of being good enough in terms of our estimate is at least 3 quarters. Why? Because 25 over 100 is 1 quarter, 1 minus 1 quarter is 3 quarters. If n is equal to 250, probability of being good enough is at least 90%. And if we make n equal 2,500, take 2,500 samples, then the probability of being good enough by Chebyshev's inequality is at least 99%. So this way of using Chebyshev's inequality tells us how to go from the number of samples and the tolerance, call this the tolerance, we can go from the number of samples and the tolerance to a confidence. Probability being good enough, we call this a confidence. So we've seen number of samples and tolerance. They can be used together with the probabilistic model to give us a confidence. Now, this is the most basic way in which Chebyshev's inequality is used. What we're going to do next is we're going to twist this example around a little bit to understand uh, more of what we can do.